Well, that happened. Let's figure out why. Hey. Apologies in advance for the weird beard and the leather jacket. It's cold in my house, and I don't want to turn up the heat. Also, I like it. So, with owning a wolf dog or a wolf hybrid or a wolf, whatever you want to call it, whatever your content is, there seems to be a certain stigma and a lot of misinformation spread around. Uh, in this video, I'd like to correct it. And I'm sure a lot of other people are already sick of being told what they can and cannot do if it's within a realistic basis. So, what I'm going to be doing is dissecting a few particular videos that irritate me. And, uh, hopefully you'll stick around to listen. If not, eh, who knows, maybe I need to be better at arguing things. Let's find out. So, as just kind of a little preface here, this person, I guess this YouTube channel is called Camels and Friends. The woman was attacked by her own wolf dog and then proceeded to pin the blame and responsibility on the unalterable nature of the animal, which, um, there's a lot of problems with that. So, let's get started. This is Lorne. Um, Lauren is a wild animal. Uh, he is not a pet. Mm, yeah. Lauren is a wild animal, not a pet. Well, yeah. You brought him up that way. How do you expect him to act? You put an animal in a giant enclosure, s actively separate him from yourself, treat an animal like a wild animal, it's gonna act like one. I'm making this video kind of just to formally state that I do not in any way promote the keeping of wolves, and in a lot of cases, wolf dogs as pets. Right. You don't approve of wolf dogs, wolf hybrids, wolves, whatever you want to call it, people having them as pets, sure. I get it. Uh, I know why, but we'll get into that later. They are not pets. They do not respond the same way. They do not act the same way. Kane. And they should not be kept or thought of as a pet uh, under any circumstances. This is a dangerous, powerful animal. Hold on, I didn't think I heard that right. Let's hear it one more time. Okay, can you sit? What about Harvey? Can Harvey sit? Give me that. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Did you see, he just jumped on me. Hey, look. Um, this is their behavior. There is nothing wrong with this, but this is something that can turn into a problem, and it can't be trained out of them. Well, no, it's it's not their behavior. That's your animal's behavior. It's certainly not mine. And behavior, like with humans and pretty much all other animals, all animals really. Now that I think about it. Is dependent on what environment they're in, what their upbringing is. And sure, you might not find that problem with that behavior, but that certainly wouldn't fly around here. Stop making excuses, honey. A lot of times, um, I show Lauren's uh, good side, and I give a wrong impression, maybe. Good side and bad side? So, your animal is like a coin and flip-flops around. If your animal's behavior is uncertain, then that's probably because the environment he's in is uncertain. You know, unstable environment, unstable behavior. It's how things work. And I give a wrong impression, maybe, that this is easy. They are not easy to live with. If you want to keep one, under no circumstances is it going to be kept in any way that you would keep a pet. Well, no, of course not. It's not easy to live with any kind of animal. I have 180 gallon aquarium downstairs. I have to empty at least 30 gallons of that a week. Otherwise, things start getting gross. 
you have to make sacrifices with any kind of animal you have. And with a wolf, or a wolf dog, you have to make certain kinds of sacrifices that other people, most other people, are not willing to make. They're big sacrifices. Eight miles a day walking or I'm gonna eat your couch sacrifices. This is a wild animal and they belong either in the wild or in a type of situation or facility that is allowing them to be wild. First we're gonna have to define belong and we're gonna have to define wild. So as far as belonging somewhere goes, what you're saying is that this particular kind of animal is only fit to be in this specific environment, which is North America, we'll say, gray wolf, whatever. The problem with that is that evidently they can fit in other spots. I mean, if organisms couldn't adapt to different environments, they'd all be dead. So the term belong is pretty ambiguous and therefore useless in this circumstance. In fact, a lot of the time, wolves have, you know, pretty high mortality rates where they belong. 30 to 60% puppy mortality rate. Odds are your wolf or wolf dog, or whatever you want to call it, that's wild, if born in the wild, it would have died. So the whole notion that a thing belongs somewhere automatically means that it's going to be happy there is ridiculous. Oh, then really the only point then is to, to treat an animal like it's wild. So put it in an environment that's like yours. Right. What were the consequences of that again? <laughs> this information pisses me off so much because imagine somebody listening to this woman and locking their wolf dog up in a cage only to then be attacked because they put them in the wrong environment and brought them up in the incorrect way. To assume all variations of a particular species belong in Y environment is really unrelative and therefore nonsense. And what I mean by relative is that my animal, though he's a wolf dog, pretty much a wolf, 97% content, he's not going to act like another wolf, even if they were in the same environment, because he's a different animal. Kind of like how I'm different from you. Every animal's different. And those differences can either be minimized or extrapolated depending on what kind of environment you put them in. Because behavior is a response to whatever environment the organism's in. And who's in charge of creating the environment again? I am not in any way trying to promote private ownership of wolves. Um, I'm not saying that if you're watching this you automatically are uh, someone who could not become qualified. So, a piece of paper approved by a bunch of other people that I guess think similarly to you suddenly makes me qualified. Yeah, I get that we should have some sort of standards when it comes to, you know, taking care of animals. But as far as understanding enough to be able to set these standards go, I, I don't think we know enough yet to make some universally applicable bar set for people owning animals. It's also kind of hypocritical to state that other people should become qualified when you're not qualified yourself. And it seems this way of thinking is what got you attacked in the first place. Have a wolf. I am just saying it is impossible to have a wolf as a pet. Yeah, for you. Words just really serve the purpose of translating those pictures you see in your brain and the emotions that you experienced while you saw said picture into a translatable form of information. They don't do a great job at it, but you know, it's what we've got. I don't like the term pet either, but it's really only due to the fact that people take the words, all words, way too literally. Because when I say the word pet, I don't want you to think that I take a gerbil in a wolf in the same kind of way. That's nonsense. I just want you to know two things when I call my animal a pet. It's that it lives with me and I take care of it. That's it. So to say that I can't have a wolf as a pet, that I somehow can't have it live with me and take care of it, it's kind of insulting. And ironic. You can only have a wolf as a wolf. Obviously. 
but you know there are a lot of intrinsic qualities when it comes to you know picking animals for example huskies you gotta run them that's the way it is or they'll eat your couch sometimes snake feed them once a month maybe i don't know i don't have reptiles i'm just saying there are some specific kinds of standards that you have to follow when you get an animal and what can you do with these specific kinds of inherited qualities well you can work them out. For instance, I worked a lot of Kane's food aggression out, and by that, I mean if he's growling and he's unhappy eating in the particular environment that he's in, I take the bone and we go out on the deck and I let him eat it by itself. Problem solved. What did I do when he was a puppy? I took him to a bunch of other places with a bunch of other people there so that he wouldn't be as freaked out of new things. I didn't work out the skittish behavior because Honestly, I don't trust people either. Neither should he. I didn't work out a lot of things with him, but that's part of owning an animal in the first place. You deal with the bad stuff, you take the good stuff, and you work on the worst of it. Evidently, somebody didn't work on the worst of their animal's behavior. There's a reason that wolves became our dogs, because that is the ideal companion for man. Wrong. Wolves became dogs because we subjected them to an environment in which their inherited evolutionary qualities were no longer needed. Nature doesn't let you keep something if you don't use it. There's no reason to bite at 1200 PSI if all you need to do to get food is pull a sled. One of the other reasons why dogs have smaller brains in proportion to wolves. Dogs didn't need to be smart to get fed. They just had to listen to us. It's got nothing to do with a, a dog being an ideal companion. It's that we took a specific kind of animal, put it in the same environment as us, and got a similar result that we were experiencing. Obviously, if you put things in a similar environment, odds are they're going to act kind of the same way. If there's a lot of food, there's no reason to nip somebody's nose off over a carcass. You know, it's weird. It's almost like the environment is the thing that dictates behavior. I wonder if it works the same way with people. If you treat one like a dog, or try to handle one like a dog, if you have um, even a moderate success uh, with that, you're only hurting the animal, and it is not okay. They need plenty of space. Um, this fence is electrified. It's heavy-duty chain link. Um, it is six feet tall. It's going to have a top put on with top wire. Hey, Kane. Hey, Kane. You're abused. Are you listening to me? You're abused. Yes, you are. You're abused. Why aren't you listening to me? You're supposed to be abused. I don't think he knows he's abused. Seriously? Seriously. Because I don't put my animal in an electrified enclosure and make him sleep outside, I'm abusing him? Okay. Can, can I just say how sick I am of this impartial observer thing? Like, humans can't touch anything without violating some scientific standard or something. It's like we're all scientists and our jobs sit up in the clouds and not touch anything. You know, it's kind of stupid that we're that self-important, that we think that we can't interact in the world in which we live in. Oh no, human beings are so special we can't live with any other animal unless there's a general consensus among other humans saying that we can. People seem to think with all their sciencey sciences that we're not animals too. What's our closest relative again? Lauren is over two years old now. Um, he is very, very good for a wolf on a wolf's terms. Huh, very good. Okay, you ever worked in retail? Uh, I was holed up at a Costco seasonally. And there was one day where this couple brought in a screaming child that would not sit down on their cart and stood up in the little seating compartment. Just screamed for 20 minutes. We don't know why. Parents didn't seem to know why. They didn't seem to care either. But they let it happen like it was no problem, like it was behaving perfectly fine. Right. Well, a bunch of other people, especially, you know, those working, including myself, we commented that uh, good belting would have solved the problem quite readily amongst each other and half-jokingly. 
of course, and that the child's behavior was frankly unacceptable. What I mean to point out is that good, very good, qualitatively, is relative. That kid was fine to his parents, shitty for the rest of us. Lorne, compared to other wolves, no. If you look at most other wolves, I guarantee that over 90% of them haven't attacked people before. So, in wolves, no, he's not. Of course, that's kind of sounding like I'm putting the blame on him, and it's not his fault. So, if you go out and get a wolf or wolf dog, you are very, very unlikely to end up with um, one that is like Lorne. Right. Well, that's because most people don't subject their animals to the particular environment that you do. Like, exactly you do. Because everywhere is different. Literally. I uh, generally just wanted this to be um, a statement about wolves being impossible to be kept as pets and anyone trying or in support of that is outright wrong and I would even go as far as to say it is animal abuse. Right. Well, uh, either your definition of pet is uh, a lot different than mine or uh, you're wrong. And as uh, far as animal abuse charges and stuff go, how does Lorne, or how did Lorne, like that electrified fence and sleeping outside and, you know, being treated like a wild animal? I know Kane wouldn't like being treated like that. I know I wouldn't like being treated like that either. Yeah, are you guys ready for the twist? There it is. So you go and you get a different animal for reasons. Uh-huh. Because you couldn't keep your other animal because your friends were coming over to live with you? I'm, I'm a little confused here. See, if my friends had to stay in my house for an extended period of time and they couldn't tolerate Kane, I'd either A, tell them they need to go somewhere else and to suck it, or B, I would make a specific enclosure in my house or outside of it, wherever, that Kane could stay while I wasn't home. Because as far as I'm concerned, when I'm in the area, my animal is fine. In fact, it'd probably be beneficial for him to be away from the company while I'm not home because of his aversion to strangers. So let's go back to the, uh, you know, I don't approve point that I said we go back to. Well, why don't you approve? It's pretty easy to see, really. You got attacked by your animal, but you don't want to take responsibility for it. So you blame it on the animal's nature. And the result of that is to stand on a soapbox and say that all of these kinds of animals aren't appropriate to keep because mine did something bad to me. Let's disregard the fact that it was obviously in a very questionable environment. Let's also forget the fact that, you know, you're the one who's responsible for maintaining and creating the proper environment. Your fuck up is not every other wolf dog owner's fuck up. It's yours. So stop trying to label the entire species, wolves, wolf dogs, whatever, as something that is out of reach that we can't live with. Don't pin it on me as if I'm some animal abuser because I let Cain sleep in the same bed with me. That's ridiculous. Because odds are, if he didn't, he'd start acting like the animal that's supposed to sleep outside because that's the environment that he'd be in. All right. Well, it's time for the disclaimer. Should everyone go out and get a wolf or a wolf dog or whatever? No, you shouldn't. It's hard. Eight miles a day hard. Gotta have a cow shin bone every day hard. Play with me or I'll chew up the furniture hard. Teach me how to do things the right way or else hard. Looking at it from a perspective of, you know, workload, it's kind of like having a different kind of child. You know, where if you have a toddler or an eight-year-old and they get mad at you and they take all their toys, they'll put them in the garbage disposal or something really raunchy, nasty, and say they hate you. Whereas, if I don't bring up Cain properly, he's probably going to... <coughs> or... <coughs> you get the picture. You don't get to pick and choose what you want to do with your animal. If it's 12 degrees outside, too damn bad. He's got to walk eight miles, he's going to walk eight miles. If he's got the remote and I need to get it back, if his growling scares me, too bad. My hand's got to go in his mouth and I probably have to pin him for misbehaving. And before you call me an animal abuser for pinning my animal, 
seems to me that that whole wild belonging environment is a little bit more abusive than, you know, pinning your dog for misbehaving. Well, uh, sorry for, I guess, the rant. feel a lot better now. I hope that there are some little particulates in there that are worthwhile. If you want a wolf dog or uh, an animal of uh, equal needs, don't let, you know, the difficulty dissuade you. Just prepare yourself. If you put the effort into your animal, you'll be fine.